So now let's talk about how we build it, how it's created. So membrane synthesis. Where in the cell does the, uh, do phospholipids get built? In the cell? Where in the cell? What? You know, it's not the nucleus. Okay, that's one gone. It is the ER. Which one? It's the smooth. So we were going to build these phospholipids in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in seven steps. Step number one, get all the pieces together. You need these uh, enzymes. Uh, you need acyl tails, glycerol, phosphate, a polar head group. You either need to build them or you need to pull them in from the outside. Then you have to get all of those parts together. You have to get them together at the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They need to be in the right place at the right time. All of the parts need to be in the right place at the right time, which is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Why is that? Because this was in the, the this is an iconic image of the end of the war, um, and he uh, the photographer was in the right place at the right time to snap that image. That being said, this image says a whole lot um, because it's supposed to show celebration, and what it shows me is look at her arm. It's not a doll, no. It's a, it's a woman. He grabbed her and kissed her. He had no idea who she was. She had no idea who he was. So even though this is that iconic image, now it's uh, evidence of sexual assault. <laughs> now, she's, she's in her 90s now, but she's like, nope, it was fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Step three, coenzyme A comes in. Coenzyme A is an, important en is an important enzyme that does a whole bunch of things in the cell, one of which is to help build phospholipids. It's going to attach to and activate the fatty acid chains. So we've got our fatty acid chains. The coenzyme A is going to come in, bind, and um, make them ready to bind to other things. Now I bring this up simply because in, oh, about two weeks, I'm going to give you guys a lecture on, the, um, uh, on cellular respiration. And when I'm going through that, coenzyme A is a really, really, really important enzyme. Like, fantastically important. And I'm going to turn to you and say, hey, guys, where have we seen coenzyme A before? And then you're going to look blankly at me and throw out a whole bunch of random answers. And I'm going to listen, and I'm going to say, man, all right, you guys think about it. We talked about it. I'm going to go get a drink of water, and then I'm going to come back in. And then um, I'm going to do that and come back in. And I'm going to bet it's either going to be Amber or Haley with perhaps Isaac or Chris as a uh, close up, who's then going to be able to answer it. <laughs> no, no, not until Amber says it first. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and only because there you guys tend to be the louder ones. Um, but there we go. So I'm going to do that and give you that heads up right now. I'm going to ask that question, so be prepared. I've done that for, I don't know, 12 semesters now, and that's how it always runs. Next up, we've got our uh, fatty acid tails activated. They're going to have to bind to um, a phosphate in the glycerin molecule. So there's a glycerol and a phosphate. They bind to it. The fatty acid glycerol phosphate complex is then inserted into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So now we've got our nonpolar tails, our hydrophobic tails. So they are going to very easily fit into the membrane. But the problem is it's still got this phosphate head. So we come up with a, uh, an enzyme called a phosphatase. It means it cuts it. So that enzyme comes through and hacks off the phosphate. Now it's headless. Right, can't have Voltron without the black line. I go to step seven. Then you have a choline group come along that acts as a head. So the phosphate's gone, the head binds, um, and now we have a fully completed phospholipid. 
OK, so now I'll answer your questions. Start over? Yeah. I'll just let you guys catch up with your writing real quick. Do, 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 do. There's no words in it. Yeah. <laughs> so get all the pieces together. Get them to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. By, uh, activate the fatty acid tails. Add the glycerol phosphate head. Insert it into the membrane. Remove the phosphate. Add a choline head, and now we have a completed phospholipid. Any questions? Yes. Step one, we're going to get all these pieces together through ingestion or creation. Then we get them all shipped over to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. At the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the, um, the, the tails are activated by coenzyme A. I think we're at step like three now. OK, step one, get everything together, uh, get everything into the cell. Step two, get everything to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Step three, activate the tails with coenzyme A. Step four. Step four, um, attach a glycerol phosphate group. Glycerol, G L Y C E R O L slash P H O S P H A T E. Next, insert into the uh, smooth ER, into the membrane. Okay, then remove the phosphate, and then add a choline head. Any questions? Do you want to go over again? You know, I'm not even going to ask you any questions about it, so, ever. Yeah, but if I told you that before, nobody would have listened to what I was talking about. <laughs> well, yeah. But I, what I will definitely ask you questions on is this. Building a transmembrane protein. No, you're never wasting paper when knowledge is there to be attained. Um, it was. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to build a transmembrane protein. This occurs at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. You need a few things here. To start off with, you need a ribosome and RNA. What organelle is going to spit those out, ribosomes and RNA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nucleus. How do they get out of the nucleus? Through what? The through the nuclear pore. So they leave through the nuclear pore. The first stop they have, the pardon? The ribosomes. ribosomes and RNA. So you don't have like it's coming out of the nucleus of the nuclear pore and going to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, you've got these C-shaped proteins. They look like this. Well, yeah, like Cs. Is that Cs for you? OK, cool. These are sort of, imagine this is the membrane. Like, I'm a mime today. Here's the membrane. These C-shaped proteins are floating around in it. They're going to match up to each other, forming a tunnel. Okay? The ribosome is going to bind to the top of that tunnel. So the ribosome, and now, okay, now we're shifting the whole thing. Imagine it's sort of um, rotating on its axis now. This is the membrane. 
Here's the C-shaped protein coming together. The ribosome comes and sits on there we go. The ribosome sits right on top of it. So far, so good. The ribosome's job is to produce a polypeptide. So the RNA binds to the ribosome, and then it starts to produce a polypeptide that gets pushed into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The only way it can get in is through that C-shaped channel. So here you've got this polypeptide that's being pushed through, sort of like through a hole. Exactly. Now the deal is, though, some of these amino acids are hydrophilic. Some are hydrophobic. The hydrophilic ones go right through and enter into this aqueous area of the um, endoplasmic reticulum. The hydrophobic ones don't want to leave that channel. They want to stay away from the water. If 20 hydrophobic amino acids build up in there, it creates a clog. It's sort of like when you clog a toilet. Uh, I, you've never clogged a toilet. When your friends clogged a toilet at some other place. Um, and inevitably, it's like at a party or something. The idea is once the toilet's clogged, or once the C-shaped channel is clogged, there's no way you can push more amino acids in, or more associated feces or whatever. What happens when you flush the toilet and it's clogged? Right. Thanks for letting me know. Water flows up and over. Does that make sense? Here, if, it's if the amino acid chain is clogged up that channel, the ribosome actually pops off, leaving a chain of amino acids behind it. So now you've got a hydrophilic region on the outside, a hydrophobic region that's stuck, that clog, and a hydrophilic region. Pardon? I'm sorry, Olivia, what did you say? Like a zit? I guess if you pop it and then you get stuff coming out. You can think of it that way. So you've got a hydrophilic region down here. Um, you ended up with a clog of about 20 amino acids there and a hydrophilic region up there. The ribosome. Right. And then that C-shaped channel dissolves, breaks apart. Yes? How would, how would you go through the side of it if you didn't have Because it's got that channel there. And that channel I effectively creates a localized environment for it. So what's happening is you're pushing in amino acids. Some of those amino acids are hydrophobic, so they don't want to get down here. So that's how it gets stuck in that channel. Then once that th it's done being threaded through, the channel breaks apart, leaving just the protein in there. Uh, step two, after about 20 amino acids that are hydrophobic, the, ribosome, the, um, the channel gets clogged, and the ribosome breaks off the top. Um, so the clogging is what they need to happen? Totally normal. Uh, it's what they need to happen to get them vetted. No, no. Yeah, this is how you create an integral membrane protein, a membrane protein that spans the uh, phospholipid bilayer. Any questions? Super fun, right? Now you know stuff you never expected you wanted to know about how phospholipids are built and inserted into the membrane. Um, the really important takeaway from this particular, uh, this particular set of lectures or this particular mini lecture is about how transmembrane proteins are created because on their surface, they don't seem like they'd work. They've got that big hydrophobic region. And how are you going to get this hydrophobic region from an aqueous solution into a hydrophobic area and have it span the whole thing? So understanding how that, um, that channel protein forms and how the ribosome binds on top, pushing the a polypeptide through, and then using the hydrophobic nature of the amino acids, a section of amino acids to really incorporate it in there, is, um, is, is essential to it. Here are the content review questions for this particular mini lecture. Uh, the content review questions are there to focus your studies. The next 
mini lecture is going to be about applications of the membrane. So now we know how the membrane is built. Now we're going to apply its structure because overall, once again, form determines function to cellular mechanisms and uh, cellular processes.